Hi. So just a week ago, Jared Dines announced this uh, uh, big shred competition number six. And also I posted my entry. I'm not expecting, you know, anything about that. But uh, I think it was it was fun to do. And uh, it was a nice backing track to uh, try to flex the fingers a little bit. But the point is that it was fun. And I was thinking that, hey, it would be maybe fun to do a video about, you know, recording a solo and how to edit that using Ardor and uh, and so on. So let's jump into that. Um, so here I have the backing track. I, I just downloaded it where, where Jared said that you can download it. Let's let's launch Ardor and um, new session. And I'm using an empty session, but I have pre-selected the output so that I have all the recording stuff stuff there like uh, Already, already like preset, so I don't have to like mess with those at all. Uh, now we have the um, the the backing track there, so I'm just going to drag and drop it here. Uh, it says in the file name that the the tempo is 190, so I would obviously match the tempo here, so the grid is uh, at the same scale. So now it's uh, there's the snapping on the grid, so it's it's like easier to you know move it and and uh, record different pieces and so on. So let's just put that in the beginning like that, and uh, yeah, if it's just play it. We should hear it. Yeah, it's a little bit loud, I guess. Okay, I guess now it's better. And by the way, I have do have side chain compression going on, so that kind of puts the volume down when I when I speak. Anyway, so for that we want to record a solo. So obviously we need to have a track for our guitar. Right click there. Uh, let's call it guitar. Um, it's going to be an audio track, mono track. And uh, it's only going to be one guitar track, but because it's going to be a solo guitar, I wish it wanted to be a stereo, um, a stereo out, uh, you know, with all of the chorus and stuff like that, you know, the effects that are like stereo effects. So, so one thing that you need to do is not to use a strict input output. This means that if it's strictly mono input, then it's also strictly mono output. Uh, you can pan it left or right, but you cannot have stereo effects there. That would actually like. Uh, uh, work separately with between the left or right. It's just panning the mono single left or right. So let's do a flexible I.O. Add and close. And then double click here uh, to the uh, this section here to select your plugins. I always start with the gate, Zam gate. Um, then uh, SD2 lead is my favorite distortion plugin. Uh, GX Scream Machine is my favorite amp sim. And uh, then with the amp sim, you always use uh, impulse response. For that, you can use LV2 convolution to actually apply. So this is just like an impulse response applier. Um, and this is going to be a plugin that goes from mono to stereo. So after this, I can add some stereo effects to my single chain as well. Uh, so I'm just going to use that. And then I'm going to add uh, GX chorus stereo, uh, GX... Mm, what, what, maybe digital delay, yeah, digital delay, stereo one, and then GX reverb as well. So we have a lot of uh, different things there, um, and then put the fader down. And one thing uh, you want to check is the input port here. So this is the input where my guitar is actually linked in at my audio interface, and it's actually in the input one. Uh, if I now play my guitar. Let's see, I don't have everything. Uh, we don't hear anything yet, but I can put here the input monitoring on. And now we should. And we still don't hear. Why we don't still hear? Oh, we don't hear because I don't have the impulse response loaded. That's why. <laughs> so double click the LVT convolution to actually load the impulse response. That's why there was nothing. So um, my favorite impulse response is the Guitar Hacks Impulses original between. Free to download. I will put link down. Now we should have it. Yes. But obviously I want something else. So let's open. No, well, we can open the gate. You know, I know that it already works with the default settings very well. Um, the lead pedal. The amp. The convolution plugin. Well, it doesn't have any any you know options. It just applies the input response. Nothing to do there. Then we have the chorus. Then we have digital delay and the last stereo reverb. So let's start by uh, 
actually cranking up the lead. I almost just cranked it up because it gives quite a nice tone like that. Then I already know that I want to put a little bit of level here to get the get the um, uh, some of the characteristics of the, this uh, cream machine amp. A um, little bit of treble there, and I will put the volume a little bit down like that. Now let's see what we have. <laughs> So, obviously, way too much delay. Let's tackle that first. So, it, it, this one has the you can you can change the change the delay length using the beats per, beats per minute here. So, let's just put this to 190 as well because it was 190 the tempo. So, um, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing to have the um, the delay matching with the tempo. Um, yeah, I just don't know if it's a good or bad thing. But uh, now it's much faster, but the level is way too high, so I will put the level down. It's much better. Also, the uh, reverb is quite high, so this would be all dry single. And all wet. Yeah, so I will usually put it somewhere around like, uh, like there. So there's a little bit of... Uh, uh, reverb, but not too much. Then the chorus. Um, this is kind of like a matter of opinion. I do like a little bit of like a chorus sound, uh, but something around there maybe. Let me put my mic off. Uh, like that. So that's pretty good. Uh, sorry if my face is on the way. Uh, like that. So that's the settings that I have. Well, let's just close those now. So now we have a guitar uh, single chain decided, I guess. Um, of course, you would probably change it, you know, but you can you can change it in the post production as well, you know, if you just record your solo and so on. But now we have a track here. We have the the, the backing track there. Next thing you would do is you set up a loop range. Uh, new loop. Uh, I would put it like so that I get the um, the counting from there and then to the end like that, and then just play the loop and train your solo. So you know whatever comes to your mind. Yeah, definitely don't know how to play that one yet. Um, but anyway, uh, then the next thing when you have your solo, uh, the next thing you would add actually a punch in range, so or punch range. So right click here. Uh, this, this is the range that you start recording, and I would put like maybe one bar before, so you can get the kind of like if you have some sort of impress impression on the start, so you get get that recorded. Um, you can add also the end, so obviously going to end there when the when the track ends. Not sure if that's so necessary, but you can you can set the punch range. So this is going to be the range that you start recording, and you can also do the you know stop recording at that range. Um, set the recording on and the recording mode on from there, and uh, then just you know loop and record. It it records different layers, so different takes automatically, and then you can edit the takes afterwards. So so let's let's try to do that now. Actually, one more thing. One more thing. Let me let me show something. Velcro tape. Put the soft end on the uh, on the strings like this, fairly tight, and now you have your very own like a uh, solo dampener thing. So obviously, if you are doing doing uh, open strings, it doesn't work. You have to take that away. But if you are not doing open strings, then you have a little bit cleaner sound. So that's uh, that's a little uh, five penny trick, I guess. Roll the tape. I guess that's enough. I think I have like, I don't know, <laughs> quite many takes. You can actually see those if we go from view, region layers and uh, over, uh, stacked layers. So I'm now having overlaid, so all the takes are, are overlaid. Uh, but you can also go stacked, so you can see like all of my takes. And it's always the top one that is the, that is the one that is going to be played in, in this, this view here. Um, so what we want to do is we actually want to start like cutting and uh, 
listening, you know, different takes here. So, so let's just start. You know, I had the, the latest one is always on the top. So the last one, I have a small piece there that was recorded when I didn't continue anymore. So let's just delete that one. So now we have this on the top. And so let's just listen and start fixing, fixing uh, with previous takes. Oh, I don't have the disket monitoring on. So. Let's actually put all the returns or so I don't lose the spot. Yeah, exactly that spot there. So now I'm going to actually select everything on this uh, this track, and I'm just going to hit S here, like that. So it will cut all of them. Uh, and then just a little bit front on that, like here. Let's do another cut. Select all like that, and then cut from uh, here again. So now we have this section of cuts here. So I can go right click and choose top. So I can choose which sounds the better here, be the best here. I'm going to actually add a loop range here, just to you know listen to that small piece. That already sounds much better. I think this take is probably good, so let's go with that. And just like that, it's selected, you know. It's uh, when I have it selected here, it's selected as a, as a top region. So if you now listen to this. So that error got fixed. And uh, this is how you would go on. There was another one there. So select all, cut, select all. Like that and then just right click choose top and again loop there somewhere to you know here what is the what's the best take I guess like that. yeah sounds good let's see what happens next Oh yeah, this one I I uh, was not able to play correctly because I was having the, the dampening uh, thing here, so I actually do need to take that bending again. Yeah, I guess you get the point, you know how to do this. I, I'm not going to do anything for that anymore, I'm just going to rip that off now and uh, do yet another take somewhere from there. Yeah, that was that was good. Now yeah, let's uh, let's delete that one. Let's uh, cut that to where we want it to be. I think it's something. Yeah, the end is shit, but we don't have to care about that. It's it's um. It's you know good enough. You you get the point how this works. Uh, now I could just delete you know all the rest of it if I if I would want to. But uh, uh, why bother? Can just you know set the uh, volume a bit higher. Mix it in a little bit better. Yeah, okay, so that sounds good. Now, next thing that we do is, uh, last but not least, the video. Uh, so the video where you fake your playing. Um, that is how everyone does it, I, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I conveniently have OBS running here because I'm doing screen recording. So I'm just going to uh, set the front camera without blur. And uh, then I'm going to actually uh, try to look good and cool and and uh, just play the music there and uh, play along so so yeah let's do that
I'm sorry. Leave a like, subscribe. See ya. Bye.